everybody and welcome to this our 61st episode. Can you believe mm. it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 61st episode and here we are with our regular cast, mm -hmm. everybody. Absolutely. We've, We've put up with each other for 61 episodes. That's, that's oh, quite that's amazing, really. That amazing. That's amazing. That's not yeah. mean it's feet that. Actually, actually, no breakups. <laughs> no, 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 no. And we're here in my lovely garden hut at mm -hmm. the end of my garden, everybody. Yeah, we are ocean. just yeah. behind my very trimmed bush. Mm -hmm. I like a trimmed bush, isn't that true? And we're going to be talking to you very, very soon about... We are. We're at the most ice... Well, we're doing ice challenge, really. Ice challenges. The most okay. extreme ice challenge in right. the world. So we'll talk about that on Sports Corner mm. shortly. And we've Can't also wait. got something very special right now for you. We're handing you over to one of the dancers in Swan Lake. Oh, wow. Now, he's a Manchester-born lad, he is, yeah. and he's called PJ Hurst. Should we see what you have to say? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So here we are, everybody, with PJ Hurst. Now you, you're in this lovely show, aren't you? I am indeed. Well, what yeah. are you doing in this show? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm being an ensemble cast. Right. Um, I'm also dance captain for yes. it. It's uh, Matthew Bonsoir Lake, um, and I play several roles within the the actual show. And where's this accent from, please? Uh, I'm a local lad uh, from Manchester originally. Whereabouts in Manchester are you from originally? Uh, I'm from Sale. Sale? Yeah. Oh, it's not far, is it? It yeah, must yeah, be a course. dream to be in one of Matthew Bourne's productions. Definitely, definitely. Because they're ever so creative, aren't they? They are, especially with the set, the costume, the characterisation. Yeah. And also Matthew Bourne's style as well. Uh-huh. What would you say would, would define his style? Um, well, he takes traditional ballets and um, makes it... Uh, it contemplifies it uh -huh. um, with adding a new story to it, um, references to the old stories of the ballets, um, and, and, and also with all the characters that happen. I started off with uh, youth groups, um, uh, homegrown dance theatre, um, which is called now, uh, under the directorship of uh, Julie Williams. Mm -hmm. And basically, I was going away for weekends and uh, dancing, yeah. just dancing, and the usual kind of playground rules of, of being with people was, wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I, we were all equal, we were yeah. all able to stay, and, and the goal was to, to create a, a dance piece. Well, what do you, do you think it is that makes you so passionate about dance? I think, I think uh, dance gives me a way, as much as the cliches are, uh, to express who I am and, and discover who I am. and. It gives me what I need. And how do you as dancers keep your energy going? Um, I think one of the things, especially this year, is, is uh, uh, you know, being with each other. Um, our, our passions. Mm -hmm. Our passions. Uh, I mean, with doing this touring, um, we are in each other's pockets all the time. Yeah. And, you know, I met these people uh, back in August and I've been with them for six days a week. Yeah, non-stop. Non-stop, and now we're here in November, uh -huh. you know, back in Manchester. Um, and if there's anybody out there that's watching that wants to get into the dance world, perhaps a, a younger version of what you once were, what would you say to them? How would you suggest that they do it, and why should they keep pursuing it? Um, well, if they enjoy what they're doing, and they know why they're doing it, then, and then keep going, and get involved with as much as possible, um, and, 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 and basically just keep going forward and, and keep doing what you want. Like, if you want to do something, you do it, obviously within reason, you know, and be mm -hmm. respectful of people Yeah. And all that, you know. Just keep going, just keep going and just keep enjoying yourself and doing what you feel is right, what you feel is best for everyone as well. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, do you know what? We've been joined by the man of the moment. Yes, it's our titter. Oh, titters. Hi, titters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? Did you enjoy it in there? Absolutely fabulous. The Polar Express, yeah, everything. Have you still got hands? My phone switched itself off. Oh, it's so cold. It's been crazy. And I mean, that's to take my gloves off to do with camera and bits and all. Yeah. It's good. Now, that's fabulous. quite apt, though, isn't it? Because today you are going to be talking to us about ice sports. Yeah. yeah? It's the ultimate ice challenge, in my opinion. Wow. Mount Everest. Oh, well, yes, that is quite an ice yeah. challenge. Yes. 29,000 feet high and what have you. And we first, it was first conquered in 1953 uh, by Edmund Hillary. And I'll have to look at my notes. Tenzing Norgak is called. Sorry. I always thought his name was Sherpa Tenzing. But he was a Sherpa, which is uh, an ethnic group who live in the mountainous regions of Nepal. Oh, that's and Nepal. So was, that's, yeah. And they, uh, they're always used as guides for Everest and what have you. I so think was, that. Yeah. And that's the first recorded person to have managed And how it. long did it take him to actually climb Mount Everest? I don't know, I didn't have a stopwatch. <laughs> no, I don't you know. Did it? I wasn't there actually. I thought you were the original this... Bubble Snowman. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I said Bubble Snowman. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, just did. Yeah. But it was believed that uh, it might have been superseded by uh, a gentleman called George Mallor, uh, Mallory, who was an English uh, teacher. And it's believed that in 1924 ish. He might have succeeded. He was last seen 800 feet from the summit, but they don't know whether they he died on the mountain. Since. No, he died on the mountain, so they don't know whether he died after he got there or before he got there. Oh, let's so, hope he got there. Let's, let's hope he got, he there. got there. Yeah, he didn't get back though, did he? No, he didn't get back. No. But if you don't fancy the ultimate challenge straight away, you can always go like for the Pyrenees first, go to Europe yes. or the Alps. Yeah. It runs from about eight countries. Or you could try doing the full stairs at Beetham Tower. Well, that's a good start, yeah. That's a bit a of a warm-up. That yeah, really that is. is a thing. Do you want to know my story about Mount Everest? Go on. Because oh. I'm not very good at geography, and I am kind of blonde, dyed blonde. And I thought Mount Everest was in Scotland. But if you want to try out a little bit of climbing ice walls, <laughs> just go down the corner, around the corner, to Dean's Gate. Oh, the they've got an indoor they've climbing thing, They've got an indoor, indoor yes. climbing wall, which ice, and you get the, the big picks, one for each hand, and you get your crampons with it. Good. And yeah, I'm sure they're doing uh, Christmas vouchers and things. And, and all is that. that just seasonal or is that open all I'm the time? I'm assuming it's all year round. Fantastic. Oh, that's good, that, that is it? You got anything else? Tell us quickly. Uh, quickly. Well, if you want a bit of luxury, you can yes. always go over to Finland, Sweden, or Norway yeah. and go to the ice palaces. Yeah. Where you can have the, the ice hotels, everything's all sculptured, all the furniture's made of ice. The only yeah. advice is wear woolen underwear okay. all the time you're there. Do, do you know what my coat. favourite ice challenge is? Go on. Getting out the freezer cabinet at Iceland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no word of a lie. Mine is, that no. Mine's putting Prosecco glasses in the freezer and then getting them out all chilled. Yeah. You're posh doing it like that. Of course, absolutely. But yeah, on that note. Yeah, come on, mm -hmm. do your bit. Ta 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 ta. Ta ta. <laughs><laughs> do you have any say in what you have to wear? Or I do actually, yeah, no, I've always had a say because I kind of helped to create that look for Kenneth when I got the part. Right. It was a brand new character, so they didn't know what they wanted to do. So I had a few ideas myself. So I arrived in Benidorm the very first time with a little suitcase full of my little ideas, which consisted of the hot pants and the funny t-shirts. Uh -huh. And is that something you'd wore? Uh, as you or something you decided to wear just as Kevin? I don't know, I don't, the hot pants happened by accident. They put me in a pair of shorts and when I came down to film my very first scene at the pool, uh -huh. the director and Darren going, oh, it doesn't look right, that's not what we want. And the, because it was the first day's film and the costume mm -hmm. designer, she didn't have an alternative. So I've got this nifty little pair of um, hot pants here. Yeah. I said, and they said, let's try, because they're actually underpants, they were underpants from H&M. Really? Yeah, and I just happened to have them on me, I said, these are quite nifty, and they said, let's try them, and the hot it pants was. were born. Yeah, and the bum bag as well. 
The bum bag came later on. The reason we had the bum bag yeah. is because I don't have enough clothes on to hide a microphone. Ah. So we had to have a bum bag to put the mic pack in. And is that the same on the stage show as well? Well, no, the, the bum bag's kind of followed him around now. Right. So it became personalised with his name on it. Uh -huh. And he puts all his little gadgets and he puts his vape in there and his, he used to put his fags in there when he smoked. But. And the character of Kenneth, mm. is that anything like you? Not really. Kenneth. Kenneth's a lot more... Honest than I am, I suppose. He's, right. he's a lot more brash. I mean, it, it, uncensored. It's hot pants are like a mask that Tony puts on, and he's uncensored. Yeah. It's a good story as well. For it's the stage it? play, yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's... I mean, for people who know the show, it kind, it kind of continues on from the end of series ten, but it stands alone as a play in itself. So you don't need to know the show. Yeah. You don't really need to know the characters. I think as they're introduced, it's quite clear who they are and what they are. Oh yeah. Well, you so, hear that from the applause. Does it's that lovely. Feel nice for you. It does feel nice. It, it threw us to start with. It's like. Well, what do we do while they're applauding us? So I just sort of fix my hair and pretend uh -huh. I can't hear it, but no, it's lovely. Yeah. It's brilliant, it's cracking. And uh, you're doing a bit, little bit of dancing in this as well. A little bit of dancing, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Jake's a trained dancer, yeah. as you can see last night, so he's yeah. getting to show off his dance skills and the rest of us just hoof it around. <laughs> I love it, I really love it. And at the very end of the show, of the stage show, it kind of gives a nod to the possibility that there might be more from Ben and all coming. Is this a possibility? Well, do you know, I think it has been left open. I mean, it, it, doesn't, it certainly doesn't wrap the show up, does it? No. So, um, I think there's a distinct possibility that there might be another tour. I think they spent that much money on that set. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to put it on the bonfire. That's just very yet, clever, that set, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But also, as we heard for the very first time in two days ago, there's possibly going to be a movie. Is there? Yeah. yeah it's a oh, scoop now we for, didn't yeah. know that. Mm, we like yeah. that. Look that. Yeah. We don't know. I mean, don't quote me on it. But, okay. um, yeah, uh, uh, watch this space, I'd say. Well, watch this space, and thank you very much for your Thank time. you very much. Thank you. Well, wasn't that wonderful? That was amazing. And we're going to continue the Christmas spirit on your Manchester because we have got a very special episode on Christmas Eve of our version of A Christmas Carol. We have. We have. I wonder who will be Scrooge. Um, also, of course, don't forget, next week we have got an exclusive interview with I'm a Celebrities and EastEnders' Rita Simons. She's talking to us next week, everybody. She's one of my favourites at the She's moment on that show, so yeah, she? and she loves your Manchester. Well, we all love your Manchester. Yes! So, should we say ta for this week, then? Ta-ra from... Your Manchester! Manchester.